Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mountains Out of Molehills by BOP. The game plays two to four players, takes roughly 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game Mountains Out of Molehills, you are playing as a mole in the uh, annual or semi-annual mountain building competition, where you're trying to build the largest mountain and control the most mountains by the end of the season. You are going to select a mole, select a number of molehills, and then you'll draft and move your mole around in the underground. From the underground, you're going to be placing up mole hills or little mole mounds on top of the main playing space, which is a 3D board. And at the end of six rounds, you're going to score up all your points that you've gotten from each of the rounds. And whoever has the most points is deemed the most competent mole building mountain, mountain mole builder, and is the winner of the game. Anyway, that's how it works. Let's go ahead and talk about how to set the game up, how to play the game, and of course, my review for Mountains Out of Mole Hills. To set up a game of Mountains Out of Mole Hills, the first thing you're going to do is take everything out of the box. After you have done so, you're then going to place the bottom portion of the board on the bottom of the box insert. Then you're going to place the four stands on each of the corners of the bottom box. From there, you'll place the top portion of the board on, on the top area. And of course, make sure you determine what side to place them on due to the number of players. Additionally, for every player playing the game, you're going to give them a mole. You're going to be giving them mole hills of that mole's color. And then you're going to also be giving them one of the King of the Hill tokens. Based on the number of players playing is how many you're going to be utilizing. And the first person to, I don't know, pet a mole, own a mole, see a mole, will be the player who starts the game off. Then each player is going to randomly assign one of their moles to the corner of the game board in the order in which you're going to have the little mountain or king of the hill tokens. After that, just for the starting first round, go ahead and deal out five cards for each of the players playing to form the draft pool, and of course set the scoring sheet aside so that it is within reach of all players. And then you're ready to go. Mountains Out of Mole Hills is set up and played very simply. Basically, after you set the game up, you're going to go through the three phases of the game. The drafting phase, Phase, the playing and movement phase, and the scoring phase. How the drafting phase works is, as stated, you're going to deal out five cards for each player to form a pool, and then each player in the turn order of the player with the uh, King of the Hill token, followed by the second and third and fourth, will gather one card. You'll keep doing that until every single player has four cards. You'll discard the rest of the cards, which is basically going to be the number of players. So in a four-player game, you'll have four cards remaining, and you'll discard those cards. And then you're going to organize those cards. So you'll move on to the movement and playing phase. Organize the cards from top to bottom in the order you wish your mole to move. And remember, when you're placing your mole at the very beginning of the game, make sure you angle the mole in either direction to determine which way you want them to start moving. And then after you've organized those cards to create this kind of um, autonomous movement system, then you're going to go ahead and flip them over in turn order, one, two, three, four, for the first round. And then the next set of cards for the second round, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth, revealing these cards and moving your mole. When you move your mole into a new space, you're going to be placing down a mole hill in the new open space. If you ever bump into a player or the edge of the board, you'll stop movement because moles are nice like that. However, if you bump into a rock, you'll move to the direction the rock orientates you to move and you'll lose one space for the bump. As you place your molehills down, it's always going to be from bottom to top. So your color is always going to be placed on the bottom, and then uh, it'll be pushed up when somebody else comes into that space, because whoever controls the bottom of the molehill controls the entire molehill. And when revealing cards, you'll be doing certain things. You might be moving one, two, or three spaces forward. You might be moving and turning, or turning and moving one space. You may also be collapsing a molehill, or you might be placing down a rock, or turning completely all the way into a 180 degrees. And uh, your objective is, of course, to gather as many molehills as possible, control those molehills, and get them as high as humanly possible. And after all four cards have been played from all four players, you're then going to tally up scores. You're going to get one point uh, for each uh, for for each of the molehills uh, or my little mounds of the molehill that you control. So if you control the bottom mole hill, then you're going to score points based on the number of mole mounds on that specific hill. So in the case of having I don't know four 
uh, little pieces on an area and you are the specific color that's on the bottom, you will score four points. If it's two, you'll score two and so on and so forth. Remember, you only control it if you control the bottom section of the molehill. And after that, then you're going to be ending the round. You're going to go ahead and discard all the cards, and then you're going to go ahead and take these uh, King of the Hill tokens and deal them out, uh, or I guess draft them out, I should say, based on the player who has the most of the, their mounds on the top of the playing source as opposed to the bottom. So if you have five rebuilding on the top, and the next player has four, three, and two, that's how you're going to draft these uh these uh, these tokens here and these tokens are used for a drafting and b movement so you'll be able to draft first and then you're going to have to move first if you take the number one two works the same way three and so on and so forth and you just do that for six rounds after every round you'll score points based on how many you control and how high your molehills are rinse and repeat the drafting phase the movement phase and scoring again after the sixth round, you're going to add up all the scores from all the players um, in each of the different rounds and put them together. And whoever has the most points is the most competitive mole during the season for competitive molehill building. Mountains Out of Molehills is a competitive area control game that involves you moving your mole on the bottom portion of the game board and then placing molehills on the top portion of the game board. And you're just trying to score as many points as possible, getting the molehills to be as high as humanly possible as well. One thing I didn't mention is that molehills can actually topple, which is a unique aspect of this game, which I want to discuss more in the review. Basically, during each of the rounds, there's a certain level of molehills that you can have, and if it's ever gone above that level, they'll fall. And you can decide in which order or which, in which way direction they fall. When they fall, they'll fall from the bottom to the top, and they could also fall off of the molehill. And you could be increasing your score or other players' score by toppling these molehills. Additionally, playing a card that has a topple action on it will allow you to topple the space that is directly above you, because you're always placing molehills above you when you move and only when you move into an open space you haven't been previously turning around won't get you a molehill in the location that you're at it's only going to be when you move that next adjacent space and toppling is going to net you a ton of points on your turn or it could also lose you a bunch of points you have to really decipher where and when you want to move and how you want to move and avoid areas in which your your components are following closely behind you because if you move into a space and then they move into the space you were previously in they're going to take control of the molehill that you had previously been building to increase their score. And toppling molehills does not increase your amount of molehills gained. It only increases the score of molehills you previously have controlled because they always fall on top as opposed to bottom. And the last thing about toppling molehills, which is really interesting, is you can create chain reactions. If one molehill that has a rank of five, when only four can be built at uh, maybe the fourth round of the game, and if you drop a five and it, makes, it lands onto another area that's a four, uh, then you're going to have another topple and you can choose a new direction in which they go and you always just perform the full topple move on to the next and the next and the next and you keep chaining these molehills as they topple around on each other which is a really unique aspect to the game uh, pretty simplistic in how it works but complex in nature also choosing the draft is interesting as well because while uh, going first as far as drafting cards is great, moving first might not necessarily be so great because people can follow you in the draft uh, or follow you in the movement phase and gain the molehills and the mountains that you had previously built. So you have to decipher mm, what is the best build strategy and movement strategy for your turn which will change as the game moves on. The cards are all rather simplistic in nature. You're going to be moving forward and turning left or turning right, rotating 180, placing down a rock, and of course the toppling action. The most complex of these is the rock. Basically when you play the rock card you'll take this rock token and place it in the bottom area of the board in some way, roll the die, and then if anybody lands or moves on that rock space they're actually going to get bumped either to the left or to the right or directly in a 180 moving them in a different direction which changes the strategy of the game as well. That allows you to secure mountains that you've already previously owned preventing players from being able to just simply walk in there and take what they want but it can also be changed because there's only one rock so as a player Player plays a rock, they'll place it, roll the die, and then the next player that plays a rock can take that rock and move it somewhere else, thusly allowing them to get to where they need to be. So uh, having multiple players with rocks can change the game situation in a lot of ways, but it also doesn't let you move, thusly not letting you get new moles, mills, or mountains, and that affects your state of play as well.
This game has a 3D nature to it, and uh, I really, really do enjoy this. I love games that have 3D aspects to them, but it falls into the same problems as other games that are 3D. Having to look down, having to look on top, estimating where your character is, and yes, there is certain things in regions that explain where you are um, in congruency to the bottom and top area. Oh, I am in F1, F1, okay, and I moved to F2, and I can place my pieces here. But there is the not, still no account to the fact that there is glare, the fact that you have to move around and look at certain things, it can be a little bit distracting, disorientating, and you can kind of mess up when you play certain things in games like these. However, it is a nice little, I don't know if you were going to call it a gimmick or not, but it has a nice uh, 3D element to it that not a lot of games have, and I've been seeing more and more of them, which is nice because I like the way that these games operate as far as that goes. There's another game too, I can't remember the name of it, but it's got like a three tower tier system and you move with leaves and whatnot. That feels kind of very similar to this game as well as far as movement goes and placing down them. But this one has unique elements of building these 3D molehills that kind of climb up and raise these towers. Another thing too is when you're playing a two player game, make sure you use the opposite side of the game board. It's going to be a smaller space as you can see. And you'll have to make sure that you switch both sides. And then when you're playing a three player game, you're going to take away one full row and column on the board and you'll use the three to four player board here. So you're just going to have to ignore a certain amount of spaces, which if you don't recognize early on can lead you to playing a two player game um, as opposed to a three player game for a three player game, which we actually did our first game even on the live stream. So and that, that can happen. Additionally, you have to note too that your moles only move in the direction their nose points. So if you are not paying close enough attention, you might think that one side is the opposite side and you'll move your mole incorrectly. And that can happen. And moving incorrectly has happened in this game that we have noticed. That's pretty much all the negatives I have about the game. If you don't like the, the kind of like autonomous moving or the uh, you know, mechanical choices that you make and then just things happen, they bump, bump into each other and move in different directions, how your best laid plans can be kind of haphazardly changed throughout the course of a round, um, then as long as you don't mind those things, you're going to enjoy this game. It's a bit of a puzzler, it's a bit of an area control, and it has the nice little top and link system and a draft system. I love drafting, I love the movement of the characters and seeing the molehills fall around, and it works really well for the theme. The quality of the game is excellent, the art for the game is excellent, and overall this is an excellent game. Very, very much enjoyed this game, and if you have an interest in the game as well, then go ahead and take a look down below in the link in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfair filter gamer board game review for the game mountains out of molehills by the op if you're interested there's a link down below in the description like i said before and of course if you'd like you can also join us on our website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more you can go ahead and check out what we're doing there on the site I have different games up and reviews for the same game with different um reviewers so kind of give you a different perspective in that as well our live stream is every sunday at 6 30 p.m pst where we play games just like this one and in fact we did play this one and if you want to check the other previous videos you can see that we played this game live and kind of get a better take or understanding of how the game works to whether or not you'd want to pick it up as well. There's a pre-order right now, or at least right now as opposed as the, the point for which I'm making this video, um, and uh, you can go ahead and pre-order the game for yourself or purchase it if the time period of wait is over and you're watching this video a year into the future. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I look forward to building mountains out of molehills with you next time.